Hello fellow creators, have you ever had trouble with just accepting and surrendering to the universe and letting things happen? And I know it can be tough sometimes, I know sometimes we think, hey, I have to control everything, I have to make things move in the direction and the way I want them to move. The universe doesn't quite work like that. Sometimes it's better just to accept and to surrender. And through that surrendering, amazing things can happen. We can even heal ourselves through the power of our own body and our own mind. Here's Dr. Joe Dispenza on exactly how to do that and how to surrender to the universe and make amazing things happen. So I thought, hell, I might as well take a chance. I can't heal my back, but a greater mind can do it for me. So I thought, if my will matches its will, if my mind matches its mind, and if my love for life matches its love for life, Well, uh, I think in order for us to wake up, we need a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. And um, in 1986, I got the call. I was in a triathlon in Palm Springs, California. I was in the biking portion of the race and was negotiating a turn. And the police officer that was helping me to make the turn had his back to the oncoming traffic. So the moment I made the turn, this four-wheel drive Bronco going 55 miles an hour just clipped me from behind. And uh, I landed pretty squarely on the ground. and. and ultimately wound up breaking six vertebrae in my spine, some bone fragments on the spinal cord, and uh, it had uh, created some uh, neurological problems for me. And the conventional treatment for that is a Harrington rod surgery, where they cut the back parts of your vertebrae off, and then they screw in these long stainless steel rods. And, and, and that's uh, not just one surgery, that's multiple, isn't it? Well, it could be multiple, but the, the purpose of the Harrington rods is to pull the spine back uh, the spinal column off the spinal cord to stabilize it. And it sounded like a good idea for any patient that I see with that condition. I would recommend the surgery, but this was me, and I, it wasn't so quick to just rush into it. So after four opinions from four of the leading surgeons in Southern California, I really had to make a significant decision. Do I weigh my old beliefs against the new paradigm and jump off into the unknown and try something new? If there's an intelligence that's giving us life, could I make contact with it? Could I give it a specific plan, instructions, a, a template, and then surrender it to a greater mind and allow it to do the healing for me? Mm -hmm. Or do I stick with the conventional model and you know uh, take the safe route and possibly have a handicap and live on addictive medications the rest of my life? So I decided to go from a philosophical realm and to initiate that to try to create a new experience. But I mean really it, uh, upon reflection it's really just two models. There's a mechanistic model of reality where when things break you fix them. Uh, but then there's also a vitalistic model of reality that transcends materialism. And that vitalistic model says that there's energy, there's information, there's an intelligence that's organizing trillions of functions per second in every cell of your body and uh, if that intelligence is a consciousness and an awareness, then maybe you can become present with it enough to begin to give it some instructions. And, and so I thought, hell, I might as well take a chance. I can't heal my back, but a greater mind can do it for me. So I thought, if my will matches its will, if my mind matches its mind, and if my love for life matches its love for life, it should answer the call. So I wanted to develop a relationship with it and, and give it really specific instructions. And if I lost my focus, or if I lost my attention, I would stop and start all over again. And that's really when I started to learn about the mind and the brain, because I realized how unfocused I was, number one. And number two, when we're in crisis or trauma, we wind up focusing on what we don't want instead of what we do want. So turning that battleship around was my dark night of the soul. And Huge. Yeah. Yes. I think after about six weeks, though, I started noticing some very significant changes. That was the moment when I started noticing those changes, that what I was doing was making a difference. And then I started doing it with more passion. I thought this idea that the power that made the body heals the body. I mean, I believe that to this day, and I believe that the quantum model of reality explains healing better than anything. I mean, you can't explain how even a cut heals without bringing in the quantum model. I mean, you can talk about molecules and circuits and chemicals and attractions Cells and repulsions. And stuff like that. well, that's really not how it works. I mean, those, that's a model that's very limited. So. I said, if the power that made the body heals the body, and this consciousness is an awareness, and awareness is paying attention, then I have to be completely present with it. 
just like when you're with your daughter and she's with you, she knows when you're present with her and when you're not, and you know when she's present with you and when you're not. Right. And this intelligence requires our presence, which means your mind can't wander to the future, to the past, and, and to extraneous information. You have to be completely present. And I wanted to create a very specific um, um, instruction. I wanted to reconstruct every single one of my vertebrae, step by step, from start to stop and repair every single one of those areas that I knew from the scans. And if I lost my focus, because I wasn't present, I was thinking about living in a wheelchair, if I should sell my home or my practice, right. and then I lost my focus. I wasn't creating a clear signal. I would stop and I would start all over again. Oh. Now here's the problem. I would start getting frustrated that I lost my focus. And then when I got emotional, I got frustrated. Then I got uh, more unfocused. And so after a couple of weeks, I started figuring out that I, instead of reacting, just to keep bringing it back. And I was increasing my attention span during that time. And then once I was able to complete a very clear picture, it would take me two or three, sometimes longer, just three hours immersed in the inner world. But I was firing wiring new circuits over time every single day and it started getting easier because as nerve cells fire together, wire together, mm -hmm. you start constructing physical changes in the brain. Those changes then you can reactivate the next day and they should be easier to select. So it started getting easier for me and I started to be able to do it in a shorter and shorter amount of time. And, and when I really got through it the first time from start to finish without losing my focus, it was like I hit a tennis ball in the sweet spot, something clicked, oh, you know, and when I knew it. that. I knew that something happened and that's when I started feeling all the changes in my body, my pain, all the sensations changing and that's when I knew that if I was making those changes outside of me, I should pay attention to what I was doing inside of me and do it with more conviction, with more intensity. The quantum field is the space between the atoms inside the neurons and at the same time the field energetically around them. So. Learning is making new synaptic connections. Every time you learn something new, there is a physical change that takes place in your brain. The brain upscales its hardware. So if you learn something in this, in this show, or you learn something in reading a book, and you learn something on a documentary, you have a footprint of consciousness left in your brain. So consciousness then has to leave material evidence of what we've learned biologically. And so if learning is making new synaptic connections, then remembering is maintaining and sustaining them. So how do two neurons know how to reach across a bridge and connect? Because not only is there a genetic a change is taking place where those genes are creating proteins in a moment by moment uh, state where a branch can grow that quickly and connect. When you see these pictures, that's a gene being switched on to do that and the gene switches on and then there's a physical change. But how do those two neurons know how to bridge and connect? That's the field of, of information in consciousness that they're sharing. And it's that consciousness and the energy that's supporting it that allows that information to connect. So then you think you're this, we think we're a physical body, right, but we're right. actually we're the field around the body using this body as a, as a puppet. So when you begin to become aware that you are a consciousness, then when consciousness begins to learn from something in its environment, the biology has to change. So, but it's that field around you, consciousness, that's constructing that change biologically. So consciousness then causes the circuits to connect. Knowledge is the precursor to experience. The more knowledge you have, the more prepared you are for an experience. So you have three brains that allow you to go from thinking to doing to being. When you learn information, you store it in your analytical, uh, philosophical, theoretical, thinking neocortex. That's okay. the home of the you and the me. That's that walnut on the outside. And so if you're learning how to heal yourself or you're learning about quantum physics and you're learning about neuroscience or you're learning about love or forgiveness and letting go, as you're reading the book, your brain is physically changing, right? And if you review it and you think about it, the contemplation process begins to seal the connections. So then your, your learning is the first step. Now, when you take that philosophical information and you initiate it, you apply it, you personalize it, you demonstrate it. You now it. you have to modify your behaviors in some way and do something differently. Well, if you change your actions, 
and then the the new experience then is created experience then enriches the brain neurologically now you begin to add more connections to the semantic information that you learned and now you're, there's more circuits in place that's mapping the experience through your senses then there's an emotional component that's created from the limbic brain the second brain then all of a sudden if you get your behaviors to match your intentions or your actions equal to your thoughts then you should have a new experience and you should create a new emotion and you should feel successful you should feel like a patient parent you should feel in love with life you should feel like a great leader and the moment you feel that emotion now you're teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind is intellectually understood so knowledge is for the mind and experience is for the body and we could say in that moment you're embodying knowledge and you're literally signaling new genes in new ways and you're beginning to change the expression not only in the brain but as well in the body now the new experience means that you have a neurochemical change taking place where mind and body are aligned but really the mastery of that philosophical information after you initiate it is the repetition of it to be able to to reproduce the experience at will and if you can do it enough times then you begin to create networks of neurons that you can activate on command and you can bring up the emotion from the experience and when you go how you think and how you feel working together when you align them that's called a state of being and you activate the third brain called the cerebellum that's where all those implicit automatic skills and habits exist so then now you are compassionate now you are uh, a leader now you are patient because you have neurochemically conditioned your body to become the mind of compassion or we could say mind and body are aligned so it's an evolution Lisa of those three steps and so when you learn that information that's the connection in the brain uh, and the research shows that if you learn just a bit of information you can upscale the connections in your brain from about 1300 connections to 2600 connections that's just learning a few bits of information if you don't revisit that information those connections wither apart in a matter of uh, hours so away so you we have to continuously review and remind welcome back fellow creators so i hope that gave you some insights on how you can heal yourself and teach others to do it using your own mind here's the thing though as he talks about placebos and you wonder why, okay, it's a sugar pill, a saline injection, whatever it is, you want to understand that it's not the pill, it's not the injection, it's not the fake surgery. What really happens is the patient realizes there's an intention and then he creates a feeling. And with that powerful feeling of feeling well, oh, I'm getting better, this is really working, whatever it is they're doing, it's really working. I feel that intention and then it releases chemicals in the body or it releases something in the body to actually counter that illness. So when you cultivate that feeling of wellness, that feeling of health, that feeling of well-being and then you just know it's going to work, you just know you're going to get better, you just know you can beat this illness or that illness, whatever it is, that's what starts to help you recover. And it's very interesting to see that. It's interesting to see in the world of medicine how advanced technology is that one of the greatest healers is our own mind through the power and feeling of wellness, the power and intention of wellness. So take that. I hope you can use that to better your health and be sure to subscribe, like this video, hit the notification bell, and leave me a comment with any questions or concerns. Thank you so much for watching.